Joining us now from Capitol Hill is Congresswoman Donna Edwards, Democrat of Maryland, and Congressman John Yarmouth, Democrat of Kentucky. Congresswoman, if I can begin with you, Speaker John Boehner says that Democrats are fabricating a so-called war on women, but how else to understand an approach to this student loans issue whereby Republicans want to fund it from health care resources? Well, it's much more like a pump fake by the speaker because, in fact, what's happened is that they've said to women on the one hand, we'll sacrifice preventive care, or you can go to school and get a student loan. And so, um, you know, I think the speaker protests a little too much. Republicans took to this floor. Uh, they continue to, um, you know, to do everything that they can to gut women's health care. And at the same time, they're saying to 7 million students all across this country that uh, your student loan rates are going to, interest rates are going to double by July 1st. It's really disgusting. Congressman Yarmouth, given that the major oil companies, BP, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, ExxonMobil and Shell, made a total of $1 trillion profit over the last decade, does it make sense to allow them to keep all their subsidies and take away health care from women so that students can get loans at a reasonable rate? Well, of course not. And, and what this just shows, Martin, is that uh, the Republicans are, are deficit hawks when uh, it involves programs that help people, help average American citizens, and they're deficit chickens when it comes to tax breaks for their very wealthiest friends. Uh, you know, they, they just passed last week a tax cut for small businesses. $46 billion that they didn't pay for, the lion's share, 84%, went to the top 3% of, of, of business owners in the country. So again, when it comes to programs that help humans, uh, they're, they're very stingy, but when it comes to benefits for their friends and the very wealthiest Americans, they're, they're just wonderful. The, the, the crazy thing, when, he, uh, when the Speaker Boehner talks about hypocrisy, every Republican voted for the budget, which kept the, which raised the interest rate to six, back to 6.8%. They've they're already on record as, as being opposed to keeping this interest rate at 3.4 percent. So, you know, this is just a, a last gas measure. They didn't want to go home and speak at commencements <laughs> next week <laughs> right. when, when, there were, when there were people out there protesting. I guess I, I don't want to tie you both with this brush, but if Congress can't agree on this, then what on earth is going to happen when it comes to the debt ceiling debates in the future? I mean, this bodes terribly, doesn't it? Well, I think it does, but I mean, really what it points to is that Republicans actually will go to no length to protect their wealthy friends, uh, to continue to give tax breaks to oil and gas companies, and then sacrifice the middle class. And we are talking about middle class families, students who receive um, student loans, low-cost student loans, manageable and affordable uh, student loans. Here they are in April getting ready for graduation uh, in June, and our high school seniors are not able to figure out with their parents what their package is going to be in order to put together a college education. Congressman Yarmouth, I imagine that you have constituent that very position, just as uh, Congresswoman uh, Edwards was saying. Well, absolutely. We had, I think, the number is something like 125,000 uh, citizens of Kentucky who have student loans. Uh, this this uh, interest rate hike, that if we don't act, will be about $1,000 a year on average to them. That's a lot of money coming out of the economy if they can afford to pay the higher rate. So th this uh, this dramatically affects so many middle class families in my state and my district, as it does across the country. Why then, sir, does John Boehner, Senator John McCain, and everyone else, including Mitt Romney, the presumptive nominee, why do they all deny that there is a war on women when they would rather deny women access to important health care provisions but keep subsidies for their friends in the oil industry? I mean, if, they're not, if there isn't a war on women, most of us must be ignorant then because it, it <laughs> seems that way. Well, actions speak louder than words. I mean, here they are today. They basically gutted preventive health care uh, for women. And they've said to students all across the country, many of them are young women getting ready to go to college or in college, that we're going to sacrifice your future, your, comp your ability to be competitive in a very competitive economy, uh, and sacrifice women's health care. And so it's not an accident. Uh, they mean these things. They meant it when they passed the Republican Ryan Romney budget. And they meant it today when they decided uh, to trade off student loans and high interest rates uh, for women's preventive health. Congressman, I have to wonder what Republicans are thinking here to play what seemed to be perilous politics with the health of women and the finances of young voters. I mean, aren't these two 
groups that Mitt Romney has trouble attracting. I mean, this is not sensible politics as we approach the presidential election, is it? No, it's crazy. I mean, it's obvious that they recognize that they're hanging out on a political limb right now on this issue. Uh, they wouldn't have acted in such a crazy way. But to pick this kind of pay for it dramatically Im impairs the health of, of women, of, of young children, keeps uh, many seniors from getting the preventive care they need. They could have chosen a lot of things, even forgetting the oil subsidies. They could have gone after ag subsidies. Uh, there, there are a number of things that they could have gone after which wouldn't have provided this stark contrast as to whose side they're really on. Sure. And again, they're, they're not on women's side, and they're definitely on billionaires' sides. Wow. Congresswoman Donna Edwards, Congressman John Yarmouth, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Next, Donald Trump thinks Carl...